Hey guys, this is Nico and Vince. And you are watching our episode of Lip Roll with Valerie Morehouse. Thank you for listening to Lip Roll. I am your co-host, Ella London. Oh, you're going to go first this time? Okay, I great. Know. I was just staring at you. Like, I'm like, you're you know, staring at me like I need to talk. It was okay. your turn, yeah. And I'm Valerie Morehouse, your host. I know, I think we just flipped that right there, but... Um, Who are we welcoming today? We are welcoming Nico and Vince. Nico and Vince! I'm so happy to have them on today, I can't even tell you. Yes, all the way, obviously, originally from Norway, and or still from Norway, and I just love them because Vince's favorite color is yellow. Is it? Um, well, he wears yellow a lot. They're very stylish, yes, those very two. Very stylish. Yeah, and the nicest people I've ever met. They're nice guys, um, really great singer, super talented. Mm -hmm. That song, Am I Wrong, is going to play till the end of time. Definitely. Um, and we're going to hopefully hear about stuff that they've got going on now, some exciting things they have going on for yeah. this year. And I mean, I'm, I'm excited because um, you actually sing with them. Oh, it on did. the mic. Oh, yes. And so it was really fun. I'm like, I can't wait for everyone to hear that because I don't think we've actually heard you sing. No, on I'll the bust out mic. a few so every now fun. and then. I'm excited. They're fun to sing with, though. You know, they're easy. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, let's take a listen. Well, guys, welcome to Lip Roll. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Yeah. Having us. So uh, I, for, for our listeners that, that know me or don't know me, I'm your host, Valerie Morehouse. Hello, hello, hello. And today we have... Nico. Yes. And Vince. Yes. Yay! <laughs> yes. I'm so excited to have you guys on the show. This is going to be amazing. Yeah, it is. Um, well, welcome to Lip Roll. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, we have been talking to a lot of different artists and a lot of different actors, and mm -hmm. we've been, you know, everybody's got a story, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a different story. And you guys, I have to say, because I know all my clients, these interviews are so much fun, mm -hmm. um, there's there's kind of a little bit of a backstory. I know you two better than I know a lot of my clients just because you're, I've spent a lot of time with you. Mm, right. You're also more forthcoming. We um, speak a lot. You speak a lot in <laughs> class. <laughs> we chit chat a lot. Of a lot. Yeah. Going on in yeah. It. Yeah. It's music and therapy people. Know, you're and therapy. getting a twofer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a lot of my clients, um, it is a lot of therapy because right. it's mind, body, and soul. Yeah. And, and music is, um, this is a very challenging business. Yeah. And we were just talking a little bit off camera um, what the impact of the music industry has on you as an individual and how difficult it can be. So I'm gonna, we're gonna kind of walk through this journey with you today Amazing. on where you were, how you got started. I'm gonna probably ask you questions that I don't know the answer to, mm -hmm. but you are definitely two of the nicest, most genuine, hey. organic people <laughs> that I you. know. Thank you. Um, Thank and you. I, I really, I really can say that and I do know a lot about your lives and, and where you've come from. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of nice to be able to ask questions and, and move forward, um, figuring out where, like I said, where you've been, mm -hmm. where you were and where you are now and, and where you're, where you're headed. Um, so I don't know, I, you, Vincent, you were just in and I asked, didn't I ask you about the Grammys? Did you see them? Yeah. Did you, you, I, we talked did about you it guys a little bit. tune in to I, that? I didn't see it. You no. didn't watch it either. No, I didn't no. see it. That's been like the main consensus. We had Sarah Drew in here earlier and she's like, you know, I just can't because it's like the cool kids club. And yeah. as an actor, <laughs> if I'm not there or not right. nominated, I feel like I'm not part of it and yeah, it just right. tugs at me. So I can't really watch it. Right, right, right. But um, it's, do you watch, do you watch any of the award shows? Do you watch any of the music award shows? Uh, I haven't watched in a while, to be me honest neither. with you. We've, we've just been really focused on making songs, yeah. writing. Yeah. And doesn't we, doesn't I, that happen with you as an artist? It would me as an artist. Like yeah. she said, as an actor, um, watching the Oscars for her is difficult. Watching the Grammys, yeah. would that be difficult on the uh, real? Because you're not... To me personally, <laughs> honestly, I feel like when I watch a certain award show, especially when it comes to music, I can quickly begin to compare what we're doing to what I'm seeing. Right. Mm. And honestly, to me, that throws me off a little bit. I feel like we're most, we're at our strongest, at our, at, at our best potential when we're Just at our most us. genuine. Yeah. And I don't right. want to compare, and it can happen, maybe sometimes subconsciously. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've tried to just focus on, on me, on, on Vince, and yeah. on us, and yeah. the, the group. Yeah, well, yeah. I think that's smart. It's like actors not watching themselves on screen. A right. lot of my actors say, oh, I don't watch myself because right. it pulls me out of what I'm doing and then I start critiquing myself and I get in my head. Yeah. And we've been talking a lot 
with guests on the show about how difficult this business really is. It's mm. not as glamorous as people think. It's mm. very hard. It's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of tears. There are the high, high moments and low mm. lows. Um, and so, you know, your journey goes all the way back to, so for our listeners that do know you or don't know you, mm. you're both from Norway. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So where, you were both born in Norway. Mm -hmm. Yes, we were both born in Norway um, and we lived kind of like grew up like 15 minutes apart. Mm. Um, but we didn't actually get to know each other until we were like 18. Mm. Right. Did, did I know how you guys met? Did yeah, it, through did a mutual you friend who yeah. kind of put us in, 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 in touch. And were you both singing at the time or what was happening? Rapping. Rapping, uh, rapping. That's what it was. <laughs> we're the neighborhood rappers. Yeah, 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 neighborhood rappers, yeah. I don't so think we, I've ever heard you guys rap. I may no, ask you nah, to do nah, that nah. later. Don't Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you share no, with me now, cool guys. Um, yeah. So you were rapping. So yes. We were rapping. That was the whole thing. Like we were very into hip hop. Mm. You know, okay. East Coast hip hop, West Coast right. uh, from the U.S. So that whole influence came was really strong mm. for us growing up. How did you make that change, a transfer into just singing? How did that come about? It's come funny. About? We coming from Norway. Um, I think we felt like we wanted to have because we listen a lot to R&B music as well and listening to some of the rappers here from the US which at that time we were comparing ourselves to them you know that mm. was the big thing right and they always had features with great singers on their hooks and stuff but in Norway there wasn't too many people that were singing in English um, so for us we felt like we just had to sing our own hooks and I think that's where it started started singing yeah. and playing with um, melody into the, to the yeah. into the raps and from there and it just evolved into becoming more and more and more singing. Yeah. And you were, but but most most people speak English, right? You have both both languages there. Yeah. So you're, you're that's very influenced. But you're saying even just ten years ago, there they weren't singing in English. Well, honestly, we were uh, we were perfectionists. We wanted yeah. it to sound like you had like born the US. and raised. Yes. And, yeah. yeah. And not everybody in Norway knew how to speak English yeah. um, to a to where you, you, you couldn't hear that it was Norwegian. And Norwegian right. accent to it. Also, yeah. because the level we were at that time, yeah. which was like at the bottom, yeah. you know, trying to make our yeah, works, yeah. you know what I mean? So we didn't have the access to the good yeah. ones. Here or over there, <laughs> right. you know what yeah. I mean? You're like, like, so, you're like all right, we're on the D list. We yeah, need yeah, to perfect this. So we right. need right. to perfect to make it work out, right. you know yeah. what I mean? But I think, and that was so <laughs> funny when we, when we got to the US and we luckily ran into you at the Obama uh, Christmas. Oh, we uh, have to tell them. We have to tell everybody about that. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. Because, because you know, we we wrote. Am I wrong? Just a year after we like started, kind of like focusing on on singing. So by the time everything started happening, and yeah. we, uh, we got to we got to you. Right. And mentally, we were still rappers. Yeah. That just had the singing thing, which was a big deal because then you do you do Jimmy Kimmel, you do Jimmy Fallon or right. Ellen, all these shows. Yeah. You feel like you don't have the tools right. to actually perform the way. That's so so scary. Yeah. So confidence it's so wise, scary. exactly. So yeah. confidence wise, because you can know you can pull it off in the studio, but another thing is to kind of do it live. And yeah, totally. Not different. even that. You do it live, but you do it now at, at you know at six o'clock in the morning, you know, acoustically on a radio show right. in Germany. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Or or at the like millions of people it's are so watching. So much yeah. pressure. So much pressure. You don't feel like you have it. So no. at that time, that whole singing thing was a. Uh, was yeah. a, you were a guardian angel. Wow. Oh, thank you. I'll take but it. It also <laughs> actually, in a way, it was kind of a blessing too, because I've actually heard through you actually that a lot of artists have ego about coming in to do um, oh, for sure. to do voice lessons. Yeah. We didn't have that at all. Yeah. Yeah. We were, just, we like, were like, rappers you that guys were singing. were so open. Yeah. No, wait a minute. I, I got to say, I was a little bit apprehensive. <laughs> yeah. See, Nico, I think Nico coached you first. He did. So, <laughs> so Nico said, I, I found this vocal uh, teacher and... Um, uh, I'm about to go in, and I was like, I was like, ah, oh, should I do it? Oh, I don't know, you know what I mean. But then, but you're more apprehensive by nature. Yeah, and especially, you know? especially, yeah. I would say, especially around that time, I'm, I'm trying to get better at that, you know. But then <laughs> I think we did one lesson. And we uh, knew. Like, <laughs> Got to keep going. Yeah. So, so that's when you know singing is all about what you don't know you don't know. Yeah. yeah so yeah, for yeah. the listeners that don't know the story, which you, you, you probably wouldn't, but you're gonna, you're gonna hear it now. Mm. 
So I recall, um, so President Obama and, and, and Michelle Obama, when they were in office, have this tree lighting mm-hmm. ceremony at Christmas that they do every year, right? Yep. And so they have this huge lineup. It's outside. It's freezing it's cold. cold. It was yeah. so cold. I'm like, I've never been that cold. It and I grew crazy. up in England. <laughs> um, so and, and we in Norway. And, yeah. Right. It was freezing. Yeah. And so I was there with Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks. And right. I was training uh, Rita. And then Tom was um the MC I guess for the evening yeah and so we had Aretha Franklin was there yes right yeah. or no and we no, had Patti oh LaBelle no Patti LaBelle I'm yeah. sorry I'm yeah. thinking Aretha for yeah. something else yeah. not Aretha yeah. um Patti LaBelle was there and we had Fifth um, Harmony, Fifth Harmony, Fifth Harmony and we had the tenors the Canadian the tenors, tenors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. um so it was this really yeah. colorful array of yeah. of artists and I got to meet you guys backstage and yeah. talk to you and I saw you during rehearsal right. and I thought the second I saw you I'm like that I'm like these guys are magnetic they have something really special but we got to work on the singing a little yeah, yeah. bit. <laughs> that's, that's how kind of it all started. And yeah. I forget which one of you, was it John, your manager? I think I spoke you to John, first? Riley. Well, I remember you talking to me. Yeah. But I don't remember if that was you yeah. saying we should work together. We were sitting at a table and we were yeah. on a break or something, eating right. lunch or whatever. We had <laughs> right. just had rehearsal. And I think I was sitting with you and, and John. Right. Um, and we sort of exchanged numbers. And I mm. thought, oh, gosh, I hope these guys call. I just, yeah. they're so, they're going to be yeah, so yeah. amazing. And, and you did call me first, Nico. I did, yeah. right? Yeah, you did. I can't remember, but I probably did. You yeah. did. You said, yeah, I really want to. You were, sounded a little tentative. But yeah. you do come in with ego. You know, right. m- most people do. Even, and ego is not a bad thing right. ego is just about fear and saying well, gosh where am i in this process yeah. Yeah. you know because singing is all about what you what you don't know you don't know and the right. funny thing is actually the ego in, in that situation will also be the thing that kind of gets you going because this you realize that that's the thing that might like i want to get better mm. i want to be the best at this you know the best right. that i can be my potential right. so <laughs> once the ego kind of shifts a little bit you can still use it yeah it doesn't have to be as negative, you know? Right. Like, that's the thing I kind of like, you know, I want to be, you know, keep going at this, you know? Right. Well, I just try to liken it to my, to, for my clients, like an athlete, it's very athletic and yeah. singers have a different type of an ego than an, than an athlete would. Mm-hmm. An yeah. athlete's going to strength train with their team, right? Yeah. They're going to, it's a team sport. They yeah. don't want to be embarrassed. They want to keep up with their teammates. Right. So there's a lot of competition going yeah. within the team yeah. as artists, even though you're a duo, mm-hmm. you're still your own voice and your own person. Yeah, and so true. you're almost competing against yourself, yeah. which is scarier the, because you're like, well, what if I don't exactly. measure up? Yeah. What if I can't sing as good? You that know was, what? For me, especially, I was, it was, I felt like I really want to get better, but then I was always also afraid. Am I going to figure out that I can't get better than where right. I am right mm-hmm. now? And that is where the fear comes mm-hmm. in. You know? Yeah. You don't want to be told you can't do more, exactly. but then when you come in and say, Oh, the vocal cords are muscles yeah. and I can, I've got two vocal cords like everybody else. It's just anatomy. And if I'm with the right teacher, I can actually learn and grow and learn anything just like an athlete, yeah. you know? And so that I think dispels the myth of, of, um, you know, not taking voice lessons or, or just being in a comfortable space right. to sing. And, and so it and was, think, it was fun. Yeah. And, and to commend you as well, I think a lot of the, the process in the beginning with you was also some of the theory. Yeah. Like you would, you would, uh, you would, you would show us how the vocal cords worked, and sometimes we we had like nodules and stuff, and stuff yeah. we had to work on as yeah. well. Like, yeah, yeah. So you, we had anatomical pictures. issues. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. we, so you had like pictures and stuff, and we looked at it, and you kind of explained it. So it made it, like you said, more like a muscle kind of thing and a thing yeah. that you could actually work on to get to get better at. Right. And it wasn't it wasn't like oh you can't sing. It was yeah. like well no of course you can sing. Yeah. But but this is musculature. This is yeah. anatomical. Right. This is um athletic. Yeah. And so I think when once you take that off the person, yeah. you can distance yourself in a way that's comfort comforting yeah. in a way, right? And mm-hmm. I think that's what happened with you guys. And also to add to what you just said, which yeah. I haven't been with other vocal coaches than you, mm. but I know that you also attack the mental aspect of things. Yeah, yeah. And in my case, remember, we felt like we got to a roof while we were, were working. Right. Where I even went to the doctor to look at my, uh, to scope down my throat to see if there was some muscular issues there. And they mm-hmm. weren't. Right. It didn't show anything. The, 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 the vocal cords were clean. Mm-hmm. I went there two or three times even. Right. And that's when we started to work on a little bit more on the mental aspect of things. Mm-hmm. And, and certain beliefs that I had about me singing in my voice was actually stopping me from 
going to the next level the, with it. The mental is huge. And yes. a lot of singers have that spasmodic dysphonia yeah. that you've heard about or vocal dysphonia that you've heard about yeah. that um, a lot of artists will get. And it's trauma-based. Right. It's um, yeah. putting too much pressure on themselves. Right. Um, uh, you know, usually it is a mental to physical issue. Yeah. And so the mental part of singing and being an artist is, is as important as the physical. Yeah. So, you know, I want to ask you guys about some of your early influences in music and mm -hmm. life. So you said that you were into rap yeah, yeah. and you listened to a lot of hip hop. Mm -hmm. So your introduction to music, when did you know that you wanted to be an artist? Nico, when, when I, 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 um, Rap wasn't the first music I listened to. I grew up with a father from Ivory Coast, West Africa, right. who is an artist as well, African artist. And uh, it was I listened to I a lot. I didn't know that. Your dad's an artist? You didn't know? No. Yeah, he is. But I, so I started listening a lot to African music growing up. It was African music. It was a bit of reggae. Um, and then rap got introduced to me uh, when I got a little older and, you know, cooler or whatever. Yeah. Uh, growing up in a neighborhood where a lot of people listened to it. So I, then it was... Wu Tang Clan, Jay Z, Nas, and I think around the age of probably 16 is when I started playing with the idea that I felt like I can be an artist one day. Mm -hmm. At that time, it wasn't even I want to be an artist because I was playing soccer, and oh, I, yeah, I, and I wanted to be a soccer player. That was my <laughs> biggest dream. But I just felt that I had music in me, mm -hmm. and I felt like I can do it if I want to. So I was just having fun with the idea. But uh, then I think around. 19 probably or yeah 18 19 18 19 when i met vince mm. is when we started really setting the dream down in stone and pursued a, a career in music mm. and then how did did you guys meet as artists was that like yes. a hookup thing or yeah yeah because yeah, we, we we didn't actually grow up t like best friends like a lot of groups i think do we kind of got introduced later in our teens you know mm -hmm. yeah and so i think also that maybe <clears throat> I think that may have, may have given us an advantage in some way, and also it became a thing that we kind of had to work on mm -hmm. and, and our relationship moving forward. But we did have a lot of fun just kind of kind of being incredibly uh, ambitious and just being like, you know what? This thing that we got, it could be, it could be, it could be bigger than, mm -hmm. than what we have just in Norway. It could yeah. be on an international level. Right. You know what I mean? And we would look at YouTube videos. I love and you guys for that. You're that. just big, these big dreamers, you yeah, know, in the yeah. best way. And right. you know, kind of, you know, the, I would say like the last couple of years, we've been trying to figure out, trying to figure out ourselves, you know, because coming off of that big success of MRI. Right. And then kind of having to, and with the, you know, with the label and the whole, that whole mechanic work, you know, scrambling for trying to find the next hit. And then, mm -hmm us not really knowing who we are and what we're doing at the point. Right. I think having some time to kind of, to, to kind of like not tour, just kind of think and connect and communicate. Yeah. We kind of came back to the point that, look, man, from since the beginning of our time, since the first project we put out was always like this thing we wanted to like inspire people when we yeah. sat, but we had nothing and we were just doing, doing small stuff that was still our thing like we can inspire like imagine we come home and in our neighborhoods see somebody like us from from that place kind of mm -hmm. going on the biggest stage in, in the world you know yeah well, it, it does that inspire they were, people that they, they can do something bigger. Yeah. yeah. And so, it's like, look at where we came from. We came from yeah, nothing. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And I think we kind of came back to that. You know what? Like, that's kind of, that's been a, a very, the fabric of our, of our DNA since mm -hmm. the beginning. So yeah. we shouldn't try to hide that you know mm -hmm. i mean we should just kind of like embrace it and and incorporate that and make make that kind of a, a thing well mm -hmm. you two have a very inspirational vibe about you and the way that you write lyrics you want to make a change and you want to mm -hmm. um uh you know in it, it have a message yeah. you know have a message for people and, and you're always very you're all both of you are so positive mm. you know and i think that we need more of that in the music industry yeah yeah i think just for us just kind of like our, our our dream with this project and just the music in general is just kind right. of be a part of people people's lives, you know. So tell our listeners a little bit about the formation of Envy. Like the first, okay, the first yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was way it, back, huh? Yeah, that's way back. We're going way back. Oh my god, <laughs> you feel old when you think that that far back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, honey, you're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, let's talk. Yeah, yeah we um, met. Um, we met. So that was your first. 
That was like the, the your first name of yeah, that the was two the first of you, name. right? The rap it was thing. Nico N. It was Vincent V. N. V. Oh, got it. And then okay. we spelled it out E N V Y. Very clever boys. Very, very well, smart. Maybe because luckily, yeah. when we signed the deal in the U.S., yeah. they said we couldn't do Envy like because of uh, was copyright. there an Envy? Oh, there was another band, but I think that was a good other thing. Band, other band, other products. Envy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think Envy stuff. represented us the no. way we were never. The thing is, we never really liked, liked the name it, yeah, in the yeah, beginning. Yeah. Right. We never loved but it. it. We, we almost failed because yeah. we used to call ourselves Nico Sereba, which is my name in. V- Vincey V, yeah. <laughs> which, Vincey was, v. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which was Vince's rap name, yeah. and we needed a, we wanted a group name, which became Envy. But we never felt because we were supposed to release our first single. Yeah, that's what it was. And we needed a new name. Yeah. So, how many songs did you guys have before? Obviously, Am I Wrong was a huge hit, but how many songs did you have? Did you do a record before that? Because I don't really yeah. know much about pre. Yeah, that. we did. Uh, we did first. We did a mixtape called. Uh, a mixtape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that, that far back. NV, yeah. Why Not Me was called. DreamWorks. Okay. DreamWorks, Why Not Me was yeah. called. So even back then, we were on that inspiring, Why Not yeah. Me, Why Can't I Make It, you know? Yeah. And then we did uh, an album. Then we released a single first called One Song mm-hmm. that did very well in Norway. Yeah. That kind of got us up a little bit. Got us a little bit up. And then we did an album called The Magic Soup and the Bittersweet Faces. Massive name. Yeah. Flopped. Crazy. That's a lot. So that is, That's a mouthful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we did two records before Am I Wrong came yeah. about. Okay. Yeah. And then what, when did you, you guys wrote that with, you, you, you collaborated though, right? On that. Am I Wrong? Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Will, I, Will I Am. Uh, Will, Will I Am. Will I Dap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Will I Dap. Not to be confused with Will I Am, <laughs> right? No, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that song was so groundbreaking for you guys yeah. because uh, what year was that? Do you remember? 13. 13. 2013, yeah, yeah. right. And where you were obviously already signed, right? In Norway, yes. You yeah, were, were in Norway, but you weren't signed you weren't signed in the US yet. No, no. Okay. So that's so interesting because that song just exploded. I mean, mm-hmm. you still hear it everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. I'm in the store and I hear the song and it was just what did that feel like? You know, having that success. I mean, it just exploded. And how like, did that happen? I feel like in the beginning it felt amazing <laughs> like when we were just there in Norway you know still. what I mean you yeah. just see this thing kind of just just it's an amazing feeling huh mm. just like having something that just you just like a momentum shifts like you see the stuff that things are just falling into place you're performing you're seeing the reaction from people that's an amazing feeling so you were Nico and Vince by the time this had the song had come out no nah, we were still, still envy. envy oh you were yeah. Yeah. but oh. before we came to the US we switched it yeah but it was so, pretty cool in that time. But I feel like once we got to the U.S., it, things it, went so fast. Yeah, we lost control, and yeah. it was just like you—you you were just trying to. It was just too much. Well, it's yeah. difficult, you know, being a band from another country or artist from another country coming yeah. to America. It's like, oh my gosh, I've—I've yeah. I've made it in yeah. some way, and it's a machine. Yeah. It's a machine, and it's very overwhelming because at the time you guys yes. were only. 20 22 or something, or something yeah. like that yeah, yeah. yeah so you're still figuring yeah. out who you are and finding yourself and this machine comes at you and you're like where do i go what do i yeah. do we had no idea yeah. yeah we just survived because we had a very strong song yeah right. and we went with it but we had no new goal after am i wrong so what happened was the song came out but when yeah. it when it started going down again like every song does then we sat there and where do we go now? Because we yeah. didn't even know how we had made such a big hit in the right, beginning. Right, right. We like, had just been making music yeah. and it, that just pop, popped up. But so, even look at that, like even just because our dream, like you're saying, like yeah. it was so, it was so, like just for us to get to the point where that song was, that was a big enough dream in itself. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So once that was done, it was just like, what do we do now? Yeah, yeah like that was it. You know what I mean? Like we're here, we right. moved to LA, we're living in the house. <laughs> right. You know, we're touring the world. It's like, that was like it was a, such a far stretch just from where we were when we started dreaming it. Right. Yeah. And, and then did to, you guys have people? So then you came over to the states. Did yeah. they find you in Norway and bring you over? And then how did you it, sign your deal? The song was doing very well in Europe. Yeah. Okay. So and you know American labels they look very much at the uh, Spotify list for example and right. different yeah. lists in uh, in uh, other places of the world mm. and they saw Am I Wrong was doing well and we got contacted by almost every label in America, all the big ones. Mm. And we went with Warner mm-hmm. and just felt like that was the best deal and had a connection with them and signed there. Right, so that's a really hard choice. It was, yeah. uh, it was a hard choice. 
again it's like big fish small sea yeah. you know yeah. what, what do you do we do were you, so much back and forth even before we signed in america fish, there were people sea. that yeah. were advice, advising us to sign in in germany first yeah. yeah because they felt that you know you guys are no no one had done this from from norway in 30 years since it was since, pretty groundbreaking yeah. since aha yeah. so people said take on me. Me. Exactly. yeah of course it's yes. my generation exactly <laughs> so they, a lot of people would advise us to sign in Germany. It's a safer route. You can, yeah. you guys can own more of your, your songs and so on. So we sat there with Germany and the U.S. I remember sitting in the studio and we looked at each other and why are we even considering Germany right yeah. now? This is our yeah. dream. Let's yeah. go for America. Let's go for you know? it. Yeah. So we just I'm happy we went did all that. the way in. Yeah. I'm happy it was we that did. the right choice. It was the right choice. It was the sure. right choice for that for that for that um, situation. Yeah. Absolutely. I think they did a, a great job kind of getting it to well, I think that relationship worked really well yeah now With, did you guys start after, well enough after, after that to hit did yeah. you start going back in the studio and write putting together an album did you have songs or did you start touring what what happened with that firstly it was a lot of promo yeah. a lot of promo yeah, yeah. just so, to catch that buzz and, just to get yeah. it going you know in yeah. uh, America is a huge country, country yeah so we had never done promo like that before. It's We're crazy. Done, <laughs> it is it's, not for the weak people. Yeah. No. So <laughs> I also remember. Europe too though, remember that. And Europe too, yeah, we had just crazy. Crazy. You're Europe. basically yeah. just sleepwalking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trust exactly. me, that's exactly what it felt like. So I remember even in the beginning when we came here, we were looking at each other sometimes, like how are we, how are we gonna manage to live this yeah. life? Yeah. Is yeah. this it's, what it's it is? Because yeah. it was so different yeah. the first three months than from where we came from. Because we're from a very small country. Right. But uh, we managed and yeah. now it's, Almost I everything. mean, people, we, we talk about this ad nauseum on the show, but people think the, the business was we were talking about earlier is so yeah. glamorous, and it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it's really work. tiring. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on from press to promo to yeah. meet and greets to live shows to recording. And when you're yeah. not touring, you're writing, you're writing, you're, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. just, uh, Look, like, even just, if you, if you, to me, the way I see it coming from this angle now is like, if you look at any one of the, the top artists today, if it's uh, Post Malone or Halsey or Drake or whoever it is, and you see them at the red carpet and they look really good and they win awards and whatnot. You see that, that's cool, but there's some stuff going on. Oh yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you got it. there's a different respect level to be had once you understand what kind of work they have been doing and what they are doing at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like we were talking about, it's not even just on the artistical side of things. Mm -hmm. You know, the 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 making the music, the the the, the promo or you know, just just all that stuff, the touring and all that stuff. But there's also the business side of things, mm -hmm. you know, because any one of these top artists you see, they have made some some serious moves mm. to sustain themselves to that level or to get to that level and be at that kind of influence. Yeah. And so now you start looking at the whole thing is different because that's kind of the epiphanies I've had as of lately. It's just um, when you go from just being this like I were like very like I'm just an artist. I'm just making the music and everything is going to right. Once you get to the point where you get the hey man, yes, it is our side. This to is it, a business, but this is a business yeah, as well. Now yeah. you got to incorporate this. You got to be. You can't always just wear the artist hat. No, you know, and you, you have to, You have to understand that more than ever now. Yeah, exactly. So when I, that's when I'm going back to the point. Like once you see, once you see a Drake, you know what I mean. You understand that he's made some serious business. This guy's not only an artist; he's also a very serious business person. Right. He has to be. You have the, to be. The moves he's been making to put himself in the position. Yeah. Whether it's just even just listening or having the right mentors and guidance around yeah. him, you know what I mean? Like he's done some smart things yeah. that goes beyond just being incredibly gifted and, yeah. and talented. And uh, but you have to make the mistakes to get there too. Yeah, and as yeah, you sure. guys are learning, you know, yes. you're only as strong as your your team, the sure. people around you that yeah. are guiding you. Yeah. Um, but it is it's a huge business and. Yeah. You know, back in the day, you did have to be involved in your career, but you did have a manager, hopefully, that you trusted enough yeah. Yeah. that would get you from point A to point B to mm -hmm. point C. Yeah. And now, um, as we're hearing on the show, that all these artists coming in, whether they're musicians, actors, they have to be so, mostly musicians, mm. so involved in their own yeah. Yeah. businesses. They're all saying the same thing. Yeah. I have to drive this yeah. car. I have to run this ship. Yeah. Because if I don't, if I fall asleep at the wheel that's when i'm dead yeah. and you got you got to you got to be cuz you you can't be a master at everything like you're an, you're an artist first and foremost right you're not going to be a master at handling your money and such and so on but you you can you got to be good with people yeah and and what's difficult sometimes is especially for us i think 
when things because things happen so fast now a lot of people want to get involved in the, in the project mm -hmm. and as 23 years old two three 23 year old guys from norway everybody wants a piece of yes. you right who do you yeah. trust exactly who is speaking the truth who is the right person yeah. for this project and we came we came over here with a lot of basically friends also yeah people that didn't have the, that experience they had the same experience we had yeah so it was difficult for us to, to, to manage the ship in the right way. But sometimes you have people that are close to you that are not your friends, oh, you that know? That happens too. They're, they're, they're not, some people don't have your best interest in mind right. because um, Vincent's so popular he's getting a phone call. Yeah, um, <laughs> turn, turn it off, my bad, my bad, my bad. We were just talking about yeah. this early, people being on their phones, I'm like, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, you do, you have that moment where yeah. it's like, who do you trust? Yeah. And sometimes you just have to your 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 um surroundings get smaller and smaller yeah, exactly you know what happened with us though with that thing was that like nico said we came with a lot of friends that we had worked with from the beginning and up but i think at some point which we didn't realize until quite late and we had already kind of gotten ourselves into a little bit of a, a cluster was that at some point this was just like um at some point this wasn't making any money right <laughs> you know what i mean mm. so the, whoever we had we were all at the same level. Yeah. Like we, it, there wasn't much to handle. But at some point, this thing went into becoming like a million dollar thing. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now you have the same people handling a, a million dollar business yeah. right. that don't really have that uh, competence. Yeah. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So 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 that's when you start. And But at the same time, you want to, you know, and if, and if you don't realize that it is a million dollar business, you still treat <laughs> yeah. it as if it was nothing you know and right. now the complications come in because that's when the problems come in. things become real yeah things like become this, real people yeah. have agendas yeah. people yeah, around yeah. you that you thought were your friends yeah. have agendas yeah. exactly and you're finding that yeah that's that's <laughs> and, and, yeah. and something that's called the, the tax authorities as yeah. well you know yeah, like yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> oh god like, i gotta pay taxes they're playing, on this they're now playing, you know? yeah. so, so like there's a lot of stuff you know and and um it's been an incredible learning thing but I don't know. Sometimes I think you just got to maybe go through it, you know? Yeah. Well, the mistakes are where you learn, right? Yeah. And that's how you become a better, um, you know, a, a better artist or a better musician or a better yeah. business person. Yeah. So you guys have been, I know you've been doing a lot of back and forth between here and Norway mm -hmm. and touring with some of the old music and you're writing. When you guys go on tour, what does your prep look like? Do you have personal things that you need to take with you? What What is that? Mm -hmm. What goes into that? What do we bring? We like to work out. Yeah. We always bring some some kind of equipment to work out with. Right. Um I think personally, I'm very loose. I, I just go with the flow. Wherever yeah. the stu the tour bus takes me. You're like um, Yeah, and I love going out for I'll example. I do yoga in the middle yeah, of the bus. You know? <laughs> There's no room, but I'm still going to do it. I don't <laughs> have no like specific things I have to have. Yeah. But I um I, But working I out is huge, isn't it on tour? It's like huge. I found when I tour with with artists for, you know, more than a week, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to find a place yes. to run or to exercise. It gives you energy, you know. I, mm -hmm. When I, I've had moments when I haven't worked out and been on tour and been so exhausted yeah. to where I started thinking, oh, I, uh, now I understand why certain artists go into drugs yeah. to get the energy. Get the energy because you got to move. You got to move. Mm -hmm. And also just being on stage singing because we move a lot on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I remember having some shows where we, we looked at each other on stage and literally said it on stage during the show. We gotta start running again. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Just sing it. Yeah. You're, you're like, yeah. I can't yes. breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, I'm only, how old am I? And yeah, I'm running exactly. around stage and I can't yeah. breathe. Working out is huge. It's it huge. is, it is huge. Yeah. And I never really made that parallel, Nico, but that is true that a lot of my artists that are athletic or have to work out or they're lucky enough to bring their trainers with them, right. um, they, they are a little bit more disciplined and the ones that don't work yeah, out, right? they do turn to more alcohol or something to put them asleep and then yeah. something to wake them up and, yeah. and it just becomes a, it does, it becomes a very, very, yeah. very slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, I think at some point on the highest level, you kind of got to, you, you, you should definitely have fun try to have fun on tour as well because I think it'll be uh, you gotta have too the, tough yeah, but you I think can't you gotta be... somewhat if you could treat it somewhat like an athlete you mm -hmm. know what I mean mm -hmm. especially kind of what we're doing with yeah. that level of movement and energy yeah. right. to kind of have the discipline of yeah. of an athlete going yeah. on tour you know what I mean right. like yeah. the, the working out and the and the the, and the, the, the rest the, 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 yeah. you know what I mean like well, having all that so stuff there's so much more for you to be doing on tour exactly, these days so much, like yeah. 
20, 25 years ago. Plus, you know, we talk about this very often that, yeah. that artists, they, they were like rock stars. Everybody yeah. was doing drugs yeah. and drinking and smoking. And, you know, they were rock stars going on stage and they'd pass out and they'd yeah. just do it and do it and do it and do it. Yeah. But they also had a lot less live shows than we do now because all the money stream, right. talk about the business end, the money stream comes from the live shows, <laughs> right. not from the record sales anymore because right. of the internet. Right. And now we're just downloading for 99 cents a song. Yeah. You know, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. The business has changed in that way, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I remember having a moment, a time, a period where I did a lot, because coming to America and I kind of started acting in a way that I thought I was supposed to in Hollywood, right? So mm -hmm. going on tour, yeah. and now it's more, it's women. Were you being a douchebag? Basically. Yeah. It's, it's, now it's what, towards I got myself. I the record people, yeah. Nico, one of the nicest people I've ever met, yeah. which is being a douchebag. Exactly. So if it can happen to him. Yeah, well, especially anybody. towards myself, because now right. there, there's, you know, women, and now there's uh, mm -hmm. drugs to a certain degree. Like I said, I played football, but, and I say drugs, I'm talking about alcohol, I haven't done right. any heavy drugs. Yeah. But um, just, doing things that alcohol doesn't count as drugs right just PS. exactly right <laughs> but but also to me it's that's bad right 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 <laughs> yeah alcohol but you're an bad. athlete yeah, you're an exactly. athlete yeah so and, and also just spending so much time with so many people because right. not everybody wants a piece of you and Correct. i didn't have the courage and the strength and the self-love to be able to say you know what i need some time for myself that drains energy oh yeah it, energetically alone it, it takes from you and i came to a place where i, I figured out that i have to find this courage back again to mm -hmm. say no it's my time now my time to relax my time and yeah the to touring with that mentality is a totally different that's experience. also getting older though so isn't much it more yeah, we've definitely. had a lot of conversations guys yeah. about that yeah but i want to see because because i feel like what nico's <clears throat> is, is saying yeah is, is a very important point i think in our growth and our kind of career it's just like when, when we first got here Oh, okay. Like the whole identity thing, you know what I mean? Like so. Oh, okay. So, so now I'm, uh, I'm in my early twenties. I'm, uh, I'm from North. I made it. I got this huge. We got a huge song over here. Yeah. I'm, um, I look like I look. So then you start looking at other people that look like how I look <laughs> and yeah. at the same age. And what are they doing? Yeah. All right. So that's supposed to. That's what I'm supposed you, to act. Personally, yeah. playing basketball. Yeah, <laughs> no, but you know what I mean, like, but you know what I mean, like. So I start looking at all these other so like young you stars, you know what I mean? Know you. Yeah, yeah okay. looking at all these other young successful people, and what are they doing? All right, so right. they they're going out to party. This is the girls and this. Yeah. So you start living in a. You're trying to. You start acting like like a role. You know what I mean? Mm. You yeah. try to you try to define yourself as, as something. And you got to look live up to that mm. definition, and I think, kind of being able to to peel those layers back and be like, you know what. I am that I am, yeah. right? And 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 that's cool. Has been a huge thing because you start right. you start you start doing less and less of that whole mm. role. You just play. have to be yourself, yeah. and I think that's yeah. growing out of your early twenties and yes. going. Oh wait, I don't yeah. have to do what everybody else yes, is doing. Exactly. I can carve my own path. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, massive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, massive. I, I can't speak for every artist. You know, some people might enjoy that, and it might be good for them. I don't know. Yeah. But I know for me. What it did was it showed me that being in the studio, mm -hmm. spending time with yourself, that's what we did. We, when we had nothing, we were in a small studio, working every day, enjoying it, having fun. We didn't have you know, women around or a lot of people around. It was just me and Vince in the studio, right. and the magic came from that. Right. So we, we kind of forgot that in a way, I think. Mm -hmm. weren't even aware that we did forget it mm -hmm. but it showed very clearly to me that hey that's what we need we need to go back to basics yeah mm. i saw that transition with the two of you as I well <laughs> because you you came to me it's sort of like you were still in sort of the height of yes you know yep. your, the song and 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 coming from norway and being over here and and i watched that transition mm -hmm. and then i watched you kind of come back you're mm -hmm. like okay we tried it we, you guys tried that for like a year and change and then <laughs> yeah. you yeah. just were like oh this is not me you know i gotta i exactly. gotta come back to my earth here yeah. Yeah. and that's when the two of you especially you nico mm -hmm. you really started to come out of your shell a little yes. bit more yeah um, where you started saying i'm more comfortable with myself because i'm being true to who i am exactly and i think that's you know that's a lesson for everybody yeah um performing guys I want to ask you about the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize concert. Mm. Um, what was that like? That was that was amazing. <laughs> Performing live, right? Yeah, because I think that was the first time we kind of saw like a, a kind of maybe like a national reaction from 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 Norway. Yeah, kind of while performing, you know, and afterwards as well. So 
but it was funny, man, because we did that performance, and I swear, like, I don't know, like, we did this uh, thing where we were dancing quite a bit, yeah. and the running in the stands, and in the, the crowd, and, and you know, <laughs> it was a big show, you know, the the Crown Prince of Norway was there, and it was yeah. a, this is a noble piece, right, you know, right. so it's a it's thing. Big. Yeah. And for us, at that point, that was the biggest thing, but I, I, I left that stage, and I went up to the, to the, to like the backstage, like a private little toilet. And I sat there and I thought, man, I fucked it up. No, no, no. Cause what happened was <laughs> during all this dancing, my throat kind of got so dry that I couldn't really sing. So right. I heard it while I was singing on stage. Yeah. And so when I left stage, I thought it sounded horrible and it sucked. Right. And then Thank God for there must have been some auto tune or something Thank on God the for post. Well, honestly, <laughs> <Right. it's something laughs> was it was it was live there, so it wasn't like live and then you had it they was. But I think they had some, I think they had some some stuff on it for me because I was like, or they they raised the backing track a little bit. Something right. happened. Uh, you know what? You know what I mean? I, I'm gonna say <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it was as terrible as he thinks it was. No, I don't think sure it was good. Especially back then, I don't think they were doing you know no. a lot of no, live maybe tuning. Not, right. Maybe not. Well, Especially just, not for that. Yeah. It probably felt like no. I thought I'd mess it up for everyone, and I was just like, oh man. And then luckily we came. I came back to the dressing room with everybody else, and everybody was just celebrating, and it was a really good response. <laughs> Isn't that funny how That's you need our... other people to tell you how you did? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes. You could yeah. Be saying, or you could do really bad, and someone says you're great, you're great, yeah. and you start believing you're great. Yeah, you know, yes. it's it's until you know, yeah, okay, that was fine, it was good, or that yeah. was really good, yeah. until you you understand that's um, a, a part of you. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> um, songwriting for you guys, I know, has been an interesting path mm -hmm. because you've had a you had a time where a label wrote a song and you didn't really want to do it or the label wanted you to do a song rather and mm -hmm. it was sort of off the beaten path of what you're all about yeah. and you've had to switch gears many times many in your time, songwriting yeah. so yeah. how has that been a challenge for you because you kind of went from doing it on your own to then collaborating because we thought that's what you were supposed to be doing and then yeah. you've come back to this thing now it's just the two of you back in the studio right yeah, yeah. so how do you approach songwriting songwriting has it's, it's everything journey, for huh? us has been a journey yeah everything we've i think journey. we've We've experienced so many different things so quickly, so fast after the success of Am I Wrong. Right. Um, after Am I Wrong, we came and um, had a very strong vision of what we wanted to do, who we are, you know. And then, then we were at a label that I think kind of saw us in a different, it saw us in a different light, wanted us to do certain songs that we didn't feel were matched our, our image. I also think that <laughs> sometimes one of them really didn't match your image. You've heard some of them, yeah, and some I was of like, them were like, "Why are you guys no. doing this? Exactly. Oh my god, this is not who you two are." Right? Yeah. But uh, me and Vince have grown a lot, and at the time where those songs came, we were both very defensive. So we felt like, "No, we we can't do that. We were not easy to collaborate with at all." I think that caused a little bit of friction between us and our label as well, which I understand today, and and mm -hmm. and and which I own, but. I also think it was the right decisions to do some sometimes to stand up and say no because follow your heart. You know, you is have what to. I said. What if somebody's you, pushing you in a direction and trying to put you in a yes. box? I mean, how right. are you supposed to say yes to something like exactly. that? Exactly. Right. But there are also times where you can stand strong and understand that. Listen, whatever you sing is going to sound like you. Yeah. So it's a balance there. Sometimes it's okay. You get a song from a songwriter; it's going to sound like the songwriter. But as soon as you put your vocal on it, it might just become more into your world you know right. that's a balance and I think there. Th th that balance we're just trying we're figuring out how to say, when to say no and when to say okay yeah. let's try this do it's you fine. guys have songwriting do's and don'ts Songwriting. Are you just uh, is it, don't. Well, this, this oh. is the thing like we even in songwriting the way we've been doing it now also mm. it's been also a lot of production we've been doing it like so far in in the writing but you see the main thing that's in our mind at this point you know what i mean is is uh it's the kind of not stand in your own way, you know, mm. kind of trust your instincts. I sent Nico some stuff, like there was this uh, Rolling Stones uh, see your interview, mm. you know what I mean? I was reading and, and this That's whole thing, because sometimes you make stuff harder yeah. than it needs to be, mm. you know? Right. Like by now we're together, we've been doing this for, for, for 10 years and I think just starting with music, it's almost close to 15 years, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. So now there's, by now there's a lot of hours put into this stuff. Right. There's a lot of, instincts that that come with that you know and to kind of like trust these instincts to some point mm -hmm. and let whatever and then just especially the way we like to write is kind of like just channeling mm -hmm. like just letting whatever comes comes and just kind of let it be a vessel you know mm -hmm. 
to kind of let that flow through and let that be what it is. And then later at some point you could be more logical and, and, and trying to be more critical and stuff. Mm. But like, so the process has really got to be organic. Otherwise it's gotta there's be organic, no base. You know what yeah. I mean? And trying to make it not stand in your own way. You know what I mean? And that goes for a lot of things in life, I think. You yeah. Know? Mm. And, and just really kind of uh, having faith in some of the skills and mm. stuff that comes with the work you've been putting yeah. in, you know? I feel like that's kind of, it's. I feel like to me it's like, it's a little, it's a little hard, you know? Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. what happens in those, in that process is a lot of stuff that is very um, instinctively you, Yeah. it comes out and now this, this instinctively you stuff is maybe very different yeah. from what you maybe have heard with the stuff, you know? Yeah. So it feels scary because it's, it's, it's almost like this edge is sticking out. Right. So you try to like tone it down, but then you start to realize, well, the stuff that sticks out is kind of what makes it, yeah, it for sure. has the nice shape and yeah. makes it different. You know what I mean? Right. So the trust in those yeah. different things. It's a, that's a skill. It's a skill, even that's that, you know what I mean? And, and you can call it channeling in a way. You just mm -hmm. allow whatever comes to you to flow through. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, even when we made Am I Wrong, we were not better singers than we are now. Mm -hmm. We didn't have better equipment. We had the worst studio, mm. but still it worked because it came from a genuine place. And as a matter of fact, we, we didn't stand in its way because we never even thought of the song as a hit song. Right. right. We just made, just made it, it. Yeah. gave it to Will Idap, let him work on it. And it was almost like the universe just put everything together. Because so you, yes. you, you just don't know. You don't know what's going to hit. You way. don't know what people are going <clears> to love. You so don't know. It has to come from that orga organic yeah. place. And it's yeah. funny that you said that, Nico, because I, I was somewhere um, recently and oh, I was really probably in my car and I was listening to um, Tears for Fears, which is one of my favorite yeah, bands yeah, yeah, right. of all time. <laughs> uh, we talk about 1980, The Hurting. Um, right. And one of the songs came on from that album and I was like, the production, listen to this production, mm. this is analog, mm. guys. Mm. Like, there's no tune on. Mm. Like, this is so amazing and yeah. so full and and we had just as good we, you know it, it doesn't make it a less of a song yeah. um we don't need all these bells and whistles you it's don't. like why have we been so become so conditioned to listen to perfection yeah. i thought that album was perfection and yeah. i'm going back now yeah. from 1980 and yeah. listening to that album going this album is perfect Perfection. Yeah. You know? Music is a feeling, you know? And it's mm -hmm. all about conveying yeah. a feeling to the audience. Um, right. I think, for me in particular, I think coming after coming to Hollywood, um, starting to distrust, we talked a little about it earlier, distrust what you have right. and who you are. Other people can make you question, question yourself. It. Yeah. So what happens is you, you, you're trying to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen the movie Black Swan. Yes. Yeah. So Natalie Portman, who plays in the ballet dancer, who tries to be so perfect that it becomes stiff. It doesn't allow you to let loose the inner, yeah. the I inner love that. power that exactly. every human being has, I exactly. believe. Right. And, 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 and like we said earlier, it's yeah. a skill to be able to channel that. But to be able to do that, you have to trust that everything I say when I sing, when I speak, even if it's a little off key there or a little bit weird there, we don't need it to be so perfect. Talking no. about the tears of, uh, of fears. And it just is good as you are. Right. If you can channel that with the fullest confidence, you and that's got the it. head game. That's knowing who yes. you are. Yes. Exactly. And so all of that comes full circle. And, that, and sorry, and no, that is we've been in the studio with mm. many big producers and artists as well, and mm. they seem to just know that what makes me special is that is that I'm different. Because mm -hmm. I mean, we're seven billion people in the world, in the world, right. and we're, we're supposed. To, it's, it's almost like it's there's supposed to be seven billion superstars here, <laughs> but yeah. as soon as we try to conform and be like what society or people around us, mm -hmm. what we expect them right. wanting us to be, you lose that magic. Right. Nobody yeah. walks like you, talks like you, sounds like you, sings like you, and that's what I always tell my artists. Yeah. Like you have to find in anything in life, you yeah. have to yeah. find your individuality. You have to. I know that. Okay, I'm going to put you guys on the spot here for a minute it is. before we take a, a, a little break. I want our listeners to hear the two of you sing. Okay. Ooh. So we're going to do something acapella. It can right. be anything you want to do. Right. Um, anything that you guys sing for fun or messing around in the studio or because we, we have to let the listeners hear these magical voices <laughs> of yours. Um, what are we going to do? What can Wait, either we, we do one of ours or we do something else. Or yeah, you can do a cover. I'm uh -huh. good with a cover. Um, I'm locked up. They won't let, let me out. out. They won't let me out. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. No, they won't let me out. I'm locked up. Let me out. Oh, 
They won't let me out. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. No, they won't let me out. Hey, see the no time to do the do 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 Lyrics. Yo, but the funny yeah, thing about amazing. that song too, I to be honest, it. I was thinking, I was listening to the song "Locked Up" like Akon. I was listening to it. I was uh, thinking, man, I think I heard that song one time driving home from a studio session right. in Norway like years ago. And then for me, that was when it kind of clicked. I listened to it and I was like, well, you know what? If I, was, if I wasn't rapping, if I was singing, I would do something like that. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I felt like there the could first be time. like a little bit of a beatbox in there, yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. how to do that. So it's the only <laughs> thing I don't teach. Don't ask yeah, me to teach you beatboxing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have just, I would have not crushed it in a good way. I would yeah. have crushed it in a really bad way. But um, beautiful voices that we can all hear. You Thank guys you. have um, very different voices, but they Man. just fit together like a puzzle piece. Oh, and again, nobody sings like you, sounds like you. And um, you. it's a real treat for uh, anybody here listening to hear you guys sing. It's so smooth. And <laughs> Thank you for sharing your voices Thank with you. us. Thank you. Thanks, Val. All right, guys. So we have this new segment on Lip Roll that we're asking all of our artists and our guests. Cool. So we want to know what's on your Spotify playlist. So if there's anything, you know, that you're listening to on your playlist that you love, right. Nico, what are you what are you doing these days? <laughs> I uh yeah, give me some new chance, man. Yeah, some exactly. New, <laughs> I was, before you just said I was gonna say I'm so it's old always, school, okay. I'm yeah, just yeah, back yeah. in the days. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me look here. We've uh, had a lot of people surprise us, though. They've looked on, like, the music that you would yeah. think they would yeah. never listen to. Right. They've pulled up these incredible artists. Yeah, right. I actually, if you want something new, I really like that new song by, uh, is he called? Ba Mine. Oh, Bozzy. Bozzy, right? Bozzy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that song. I heard that song in my... Um, That's nice. I use Outside that a lot. Apartment. I what? use that a lot with artists to do covers because it's high. Mm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good. I would like to. Tune. If I come back in, I would like to Bozzy. sing that one. Yeah, I really like that song. Um, other than that, you know, you know, I've been so much on my African stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I listen to it. Yeah, constantly. Always, like I'm just always. really. I've been on my Congolese music. Conga, yeah. Trust African me, it tribal. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You would know these artists yeah but you might like the music is yeah well it's yeah. inspired it inspires yeah. you right it so, inspires me yeah i like it a lot i'm playing Bins. guitar congo is very uh, guitar based music yeah so i'm listening to them and trying to learn how oh to play. good for you yeah. new instrument we yep. love that the more we can pack in the better yeah, yeah. what are you listening to vince oh uh, you know what these days i've been really into like uh like 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 classics or you know, maybe even new classics okay so like songs that have been selling a lot just to kind of to study the writing and everything so one of the songs I like these days a lot is uh, Lean On Major Lazer oh Major yeah. Lazer is yeah. that a classic <laughs> well I don't at know. least not to me not I think classic. classics I'm like Sam Cooke oh Major Lazer no 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 but I'm, I'm thinking not. I don't think it's like a classic maybe today but I think yeah. it's a song that maybe in 10-15 in years time when I'm trying if I'm trying to go back to right, and somebody plays that song, I'd be mm. like, "Oh yeah, I remember from that time." It yeah. was like yeah. one of those songs. It's one of the biggest from that genre. It's not genre. Really interesting. A classic. It's not like you know, like one of these nights kind of thing. Right. It's not like that kind of yeah. a classic. But it could be. Well, maybe in the not future. yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it could a be future, a song. It's that, a future classic. Yeah. yeah, like it could be a song <laughs> that we, you go back to maybe in like this because this is actually a pretty. See, we did a classic. You and I. Do you remember the classic we worked on? What was that again? We did a couple. Of we did so. Seal. We did and you killed it. Yeah, we did. We did was it uh, Rose? Rose. Kiss from we Rose? did Kiss yeah. from no Rose, and and it was it was like oh my god, it's the new Seal because yeah. he's got no that way. rough, voice, right? um, <laughs> little like rough airy yeah, sound yeah. to his voice. It was very cool. Even, we, did the, we did John Legend no, All of Me, but that thing is so like I think like that could be something that really we go hard. back to in in the future. You yeah, know what I mean like it, it's, well, it, it's, that it's just is a quality song, a quality classic song. Yeah. Okay, I get that. Yeah, but like so, I'm just kind of like more mostly just kind of going through. These yeah. songs that are sold a lot, you know, and just kind of looking at just kind of the writing, how they did it, you know, it's just interesting. Do you guys name your playlists? Yeah. What do you, what's your, I, I what's your name? I, no, I didn't know that that was a thing, but apparently that's a thing now. To name them, right? Yeah. I have one here called Travel. Oh, so that's your travel that's playlist. That's basically, I must have been on a travel to somewhere <laughs> and I've downloaded uh, like 20 songs. Oh, okay. That I wanted to listen to while I'm traveling. Uh, I have Inspo inspiration okay inspo love it i have um hip-hop i have a prince playlist love it prince. gotta have there's a classic yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a, classic. a lot of different stuff yeah yeah what about you vince 
I don't really I don't really do a lot. I have one that's like a, like a workout one. Right. And, um, but mostly I just, you know, on Spotify, I just save them. Yeah, that's what I do too. So, I'm on like just, I, I hear something I like yeah, and I hit which save, is interesting. save. Yeah, because then you, you start going back to it, you can see different time periods. Yeah. Like there was like different phases. What you were interested yeah, in. Yeah. Like, well, you have 10, so, 15 songs that's all in the same kind so of So what's world. your guilty pleasure song then? To be honest. Oh. Do you have one? I don't necessarily know if I can like calling it a guilty pleasure, but I really love Girls just want to have fun with Cindy Lauper. What? I really love it. I really love it. Okay. There's I'm some totally blown in away. There that I would I love. not have imagined that that song yeah, I think, would come I think out that probably makes of your it, mouth. Kind of calls, but, but I love it. I Why? Always loved it. Oh, now I now have to ask. Well, what what I don't is know. it about I think this it's song? The, it's, the, it's the melodies, you know? Yeah. There's some stuff that she does, especially also kind of going at the end of the song. I can't remember. Uh, you better be careful. I might, my mate, we might make you sing it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I gotta. But that's the kind of like whenever I hear that song, I really enjoy it. Wow, Which, yeah, Cindy's yeah. gonna love that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, like yeah. that so much. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, we're we're doing it. it now in the yeah. studio. Next time you come <laughs> in, that's the song we're working on. The melodies actually they have an African uh, flavor yeah, to it, honestly. It did, yeah. right? I'm you, it's I just it. realized it now, at the pairing end it a cappella yeah, yeah. without the beats. There's some stuff going on at the end. I can't remember what it is, but it's, I was like, yo, this is pretty. Yeah. You know, it has some kind yeah, of yeah. A thing. I was like, this is something. Girls yeah. just want to have fun, African style. Interpreted by. Vince Derry. Yeah, this is how we're doing yeah. this. I love that. It's Hilarious. Like a Backstreet Voice is too pretty cool. Like um, that that way. Oh yeah. I want it that way. Right. No, no. That's it's a nice. great song. Nice. I love it's that. Nice. That's yeah. probably the best answer we've had so far. Okay, yeah. No it's, pressure. It's Nico. funny because <laughs> yeah. it's funny because in that and from that era. I remember listening to those kind of songs yeah. in that time, and it was yeah. so cheesy and so no, yeah, I didn't yeah. like it being into hip hop at the true, time. That's true, though, isn't yeah. it? Right. Now we listen back but and we're now, like, we gotta dance like, to yeah. it. So I have yeah. a bunch of Spice Girl songs that I love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Spice Tell me what I want. I really, 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 really want it. it. <laughs> like it's genius. Yeah. No lyrics, never lyrics. Just melodies. It's great. It's great. It's great. You, you can appreciate now the songwriting and the yeah. melody of it. Yeah. Just, it is. That's just, so interesting. Yeah. I never thought about that. Any anything else while we're on this roll, this lip roll? I know there's more. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure. Well, shameless talk, plug there. We talked about it once. This, uh, <laughs> this, 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 this Kenny Rogers and uh, oh, Dolly Parton yeah. song. Oh yeah. I don't know if you heard it. Once. Islands heard it once. in the stream. Is what we are. Oh, that one, yeah, yeah of course. Never, 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 never. How can we belong? Sail away with me to another world, and we'll rely on each other. Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> making love and do another. Ah, uh -uh. uh, is that something like that? Yeah, yeah I mean, you can't stop singing. You know what? Those, <laughs> are, those are the type of songs. Like, remember. I no, I said no, I hadn't heard it. Yeah. But right. it's those type of songs that you have heard. You heard it. it. Right. You definitely heard them yeah. sometime right. in your I life. I think uh, this, this is the one um, ODB and. Um, it's not ODB? Oh, yeah, someone sampled it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maya and I think uh, Ghetto Superstar. Really? Ghetto Superstar. Got it. This oh, is, yeah, yeah, I remember that. This is, this is the, the Gib, Gib Brothers the and Gib, stuff. Uh, the Bee Gees. Yeah, Bee Gees. Bee Gees. Yeah, yeah. yeah, again, my generation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but all classics. I mean, those classics. were classics. Serious and you hear classics. a lot of music today where. They sample yes. older music yeah, and definitely. you'll hear someone in their 20s go, oh, you know, that's so great. I said, oh, that's that's a cover. You yeah. know, that's actually from 19 whatever, <laughs> 75. Right. They're like, what? Yeah. Um, but yeah, all the great ones they do, they get they get replayed. And yeah. um, uh, we're speaking of working out songs, working out to anything. Workout songs? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I think I have He's some like, here. I'm going um, back to my phone. Yeah. Workout songs. I have a lot of hip. You know what I? Hip hop is Yeah, I work out to um. Fat man scoop, Clan, 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 Clan. I just go. Oh, I I do not know that one. You know that song? Really? The fat man scoop song. I never knew there was a love like this before. Yeah, yeah. The dance, yeah. Fat, you don't know fat man scoop? No. But that doesn't mean anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fire song. All right. Um. I, 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 know, I know songs um, when artists come in and, and show them to me. That's how, where I find my songs now. Right. Like, yeah. I'm never in my car. So, right. you know. Yeah, I feel like 
hip hop is great for working. Hip hop is amazing. Like. Is I mean, listen, yeah, I still so, listen. I still yeah. listen to house music. I mean, that's house what I run too, to. Yeah. House is great. Yeah. You know, it's just got that beat, that driving yeah, beat yeah. underneath it. Yeah. Um, who, who do you guys think, artist wise, that, that's newly discovered, or is there anybody that we should be listening to? <laughs> is there anybody that you listen to that you love that you think um, not a lot um, of people know about? Hmm. Good question. That's always a stumper. It's yeah, yeah, because it's it's been a while since I was out looking for really discovering yeah. artists. Right. I used to do that a lot right. before. When well, I was because now younger. we've got so much access yeah. with, with you know, Spotify streams and all that. There's there's all these new artists that would never yeah. have a platform that have a platform yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. So right. I always like to ask that song. Right. But um, <laughs> I feel you okay, so there's one song that I liked. <laughs> I sent it to Nico actually. Which one? Uh, it was a song called uh, "Take Me to Your Planet." I th- it's, a, it's a Norwegian artist, which I never really heard of before. But she's called uh, Lil Halima. Huh. That's one of my shout like, out to Lil Halima. Halima. Yeah, this I is love one that. of the new new artist songs that I kind of like a lot these days. So right. I want you guys um, to go through your phones if you would and play me your favorite voice demo voice memo demo mm-hmm. so we all have voice memos right that we have had on our phones for years and years and for whatever reason we've kept them we haven't erased them yeah. Yeah. is there anything that you've put on your phone from years ago that's kind of still there and cool <laughs> that we can we can hear yeah that's a lot which one is it something that's has a good there, there are so many trust me yeah which and maybe one? anything that um didn't get made or got you know a, an idea yeah we can go back I could play you a lot on mine, um, but I would get into trouble. <laughs> oh, right, right, really. <laughs> I don't think my clients would appreciate that too much, but there are some funny ones on there. So I, I like to ask that question. Right. Yeah. Maybe something from the Greg session. Or just eeny, meeny, miny, mo it. Greg oh, session yeah. or <laughs> something from Team Salute session. What about the... You can do anything from maybe Hollywood. Af- Af- yeah, or Af- Save a Af- Prayer maybe. Or do that too. Yeah, that works. How many are on there? Do you have like hundreds? Yeah, hundreds and hundreds. And on different phones and just, yeah. It's thousands even by now, to be honest. This one is yet to be made, though. Anyone that you can pull up. Gorgeous. Yeah, that's great. Great, great, great yeah. Love that. That's yeah. great. Uh, vo- but this, to be honest, that's the number one, maybe, voice writing. No, voice, no, songwriting tool, maybe for me, is the, the voice memos. Yeah, because oh, you have yeah. it. It's right there. <laughs> like, we used to walk one. around with a tape yeah. recorder when we, you know, just yeah. sort of like dictate into like, this amazing, thing. Like yeah. amazing. Yeah. And, you, and even some stuff, you, like, you, you let it run, right? Yeah. You, or I let it run and then uh, do, do some stuff and then I'm like, I don't know. You but guys you are telling it. you. You Listen go back, back to, it. to it, and then it's like, hey, there's a whole thing here. Yeah. Like I get it now. You know, maybe like maybe sometimes it's not even like. Sometimes it's like months and months later. You go back to it, and it's like, I get this now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I didn't get it at the time. You yeah. Know? It's a well, great it tool. is. It's it's all very. Um, this business again it's all elusive and songwriting there is no rhyme or reason to it you know and I just feel again is knowing both of you there's I just I usually have a handful of clients where through my career I'm sitting back thinking these guys just need to be a household name Mm -hmm. I mean there's so much talent there's so much music and vocals and and, in the two of you the way that you like you know like in a partnership if there's a dance that happens Mm -hmm. you two have that you have that magic and I'm just I know that there's going to be another song, something out there that's just going to hit and it's going to be remarkable. Thank you. You know, like five, we were just talking about five seconds of summer earlier, you know, where they were dark for so many years. Mm, And uh, for those, my listeners that don't know, I, I I train those, those guys as well. And uh, amazing, talented boys, very cool voices. And all of a sudden they had this big, huge hit Mm. song, young blood, and they were back right on the top Mm, again. And so you're two of those artists that I just know there's 
something brewing. Thank you. You know, Thank because you. there's you you do really have something very very special. Um, and I'm wondering what goals you have for 2019 now. So I know you're writing. Yeah. Um, so what what's going on this year? We want to um, a lot's going on. A lot year. is going on. We <laughs> want to talk, we talk want to, to release <laughs> a single very soon. Probably That's we're, we're trying around April. Uh, Yay! Yeah. More music. Yes. We need it. We want it. Nico and Vince got, fans. Yeah. We need it. Yeah. yeah, but we got like an album that's in the works. That's really that's, that's in the, the works main too. thing. But you see, to be honest, the main thing for us, and we were talking a lot about it, is like we haven't been able to to release music as consistently and often as we've we've wanted it mm-hmm. to, for whatever reasons. It could have been like a label thing. It could have been a writing thing or whatnot. And I think that to our fans, like we're really appreciative for fans that we have that are like really patient because there mm-hmm. haven't been a lot of music lately, you know? And I hope this year we'll be able to change that, you know, yeah. and give them, like we've taken a long break now not putting out any music, basically because we just wanted to say, you know what, next time we come out and we talk, we wanted to, to say something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we wanted to consistently have stuff to, to talk with. So that's yeah. maybe the plan this year to... Well, it'll be worth the wait. Exactly. You know, it'll that's be worth the wait. You know? and, and hopefully maybe you'll, you'll, you'll even be a little surprised or feel like, wow, this is something fresh or something I new. I can't you know? wait because for yeah. people who didn't listen to Forget Just Am I Wrong, that entire album, I loved that <laughs> album. Awesome. I mean, it was so awesome. inspiring and uplifting. Yeah, right. um, and if I had to have a whole album that I was wanted to be inspired by and I could choose one, mm. that would probably be on my top five. Yeah, amazing. You know, Thank just you. every single song it just kept hitting you in the face Thank and I'm you. like why are these songs not Thank being played you. at right. nauseum you. you know and, and 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 funny enough I talked about Tears for Fears earlier when I worked in the music business I worked at Maverick Records back in the day mm. there was an album they came out called Raul and the Kings of Spain and it was okay. when I think the two of them had split right. Right. off and he did something on his own and it was so good right. 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 and and it just didn't hit it yes. didn't get listened to it's and weird, I'm like huh? how can I'm I'm flipping out when that I remember we had these of course we called them jewel cases right yeah. with yeah, the yeah, CDs yeah, yeah. and somebody put it on my desk and it was just a it was a sample right. and I I put this thing in I put my phones in and I just I melted and I just couldn't understand why you know so the 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 production the voice that there's it's who knows why it happens and it doesn't happen but I just know that something brewing and, and there's something brewing for you guys, and it's gonna and it's gonna think, be big this year. I think so you feel so too, you know. Yeah, we feel that way for we sure. Feel the I mean, we're we're like, sitting Come with on. the music, so we know we're like, oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah, close. Yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's close. Yeah, we're it's almost close. there. It's exciting. We're definitely taking those words with us. Yeah, Good. Thank you for sure. I, thank you. I love thank that. So yeah. where where can your fans and your audience find you guys? <laughs> Nowhere. Right now, no you're on this podcast right well, here. Right on, now. Uh, the podcast. Yeah. You can find them on Liberal People. Um, no, no, we, we've we're, taken a, a break, a you, long you, break from been, Instagram and Facebook and everything. We've been you ghosts. were on it. We've been ghosts. Yeah. yeah, but we'll be. We're on it, Nico. And because Vince. I follow you and I haven't yeah. seen anything in it at least a year. I know. I know. Like we, like I said, like we just felt like once we, like at this point, I feel like I should be congratulating you though. Yeah, not, not, you. not, you know. Honestly, it goes for you. Yeah. Right. Let's, good let's for you. That good for us. <laughs> Thank it you. was a conscious choice. It's a yeah. conscious choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll so be it could we'll be, be a soul heavy. sucker. You, yeah. you will yeah. be we're back. We're definitely heavy. not done for sure. No, 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 no. no. Right. We, we, we feel we're here. We're stronger here. than yeah. ever. We're just honestly. making sure that is. It's like, all right, this is this is how I want to see Nico and Vince at this point. I get you know it, I, mean? I get like, it. And you'll be able to have yeah. that infusion happen when that music yeah, comes back. Exactly, and exactly. Everybody understands that. Yeah. There are a lot of artists that had to take a break and yeah, they just yeah. unplug for a little bit of time and come back right. with a fresh perspective. So, mm, right. um, you know, we're we're all waiting with bated breath. I uh, know that I am. So, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for joining us on the thank show today. It's been really, yeah. really wonderful having thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you to Nico and Vince for I being them. on Lip Roll today. Being on Lip Roll and just kind of just laying it all out there. I they really went into everything. it, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, everything from, you know, the culture shock of coming from Norway to here and really just understanding just the, how huge it was and how, how much advice they had for young singers and songwriters. Because I don't think many people really know how difficult it is when you're just thrown in the deep end. Right, like and, and they were definitely thrown in the deep end. Mm-hmm. I mean, if anybody can speak on that, it's the two of them. So I was very excited to hear their story from beginning to middle to end, and they've got yeah. some really good advice for yeah. their fans, their listeners, and anybody that, that in, is in the music business or wants to be in the music mm-hmm. business. So, yeah. 
And, um, and I think you really hit it on the head. I think I'm really excited for what's coming down the road yeah. um, for them and, you know, where their journey is is taking them right. to that next point and that next hit. I'm hoping we can follow them at some point. Mm-hmm. So again, and have them, you know, have this explosion. So they're just so talented and so lovely. Yeah. Um, but again, we want to thank everybody that has subscribed on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right, where else, Ella? And um, we've got YouTube. YouTube. And we've YouTube. got uh, you, YouTube. What am I, am I missing Maybe, anything? I don't know whether I should be an actor because I can't enunciate my words. So that like, would be very YouTube. bad. YouTube. Yes, YouTube. YouTube. And um, we love comments on there. I want to get more comments going so we yeah, can like please give us comments, forward. guys. We, we, we love hearing from you. So, <laughs> you know, that's super important. Super important. And then obviously Instagram, which is, let's do it again. Let's see if we can do this in sync perfectly again. Are you ready for this? What are we doing? At, at liproll.com. Co. And we'll see you next time. See you next time.